Hey there everybody, Mr. Lewis here. I just wanted to take a few minutes today to go over some key items from section 4.7 of AP Hug. And to do that, I'm going to use my handy dandy map behind me here. So, topic one, the migration of African Americans. The reason for the large clusters of African American populations we find in the southeast region of the United States today goes back to the transatlantic or triangular Atlantic slave trade system that took place hundreds of years ago and was largely orchestrated by European powers who were quite wealthy and quite powerful at the time and forced the migration of millions of people from western regions of Africa to the Americas, South America, the Caribbean, and North America. And that's not just the reason we find so many African Americans in the Southeast region of the United States today, but also the reason we find a lot of people today in the populations of South American countries and Caribbean nations who have African lineage. Now, after the Civil War in the United States got rid of slavery, there was a huge migration of African Americans from the southern regions of the country to northern, largely urban regions of the country. St. Louis, Cleveland, Detroit, Chicago, LA, San Francisco, New York City, Philadelphia. There were many jobs being offered in those urban areas as a result of industrialization. Industrialization creates jobs and that acts as an economic pull factor for migration. So many African Americans who were leaving the rural South were looking for gainful employment and found it in these urban areas. Now, also throughout the early 1900s and up through 1954 in the United States, we see in the South Jim Crow laws. Jim Crow laws were essentially enforcing legal segregation. And although the court said it was supposed to be separate but equal, it was very much unequal. And because of that, Many African Americans left the South during that time period and moved to a lot of these same urban areas. And at the same time, we see a lot of people moving out of those urban areas into suburbs, close to but not inside of the cities, right? Within driving distance. Crown Point would be an example of a suburban area because we are within the Chicagoland region. So this is what's known as white flight because a lot of the people that were moving out of the inner cities into these suburban areas were largely white. And you can see in your notes today in section 4.7 a graph of the population in Detroit that kind of displays what we're talking about and the changes in population in Detroit between African Americans and white Americans. The second topic we need to look at today is the migration of Asian Americans and Hispanic Americans because it wasn't up until about 50 years ago that this migration became a large part of the U.S. population. Today, Hispanic Americans are about 17% of the population, Asian Americans 5%, so we're talking almost a quarter of the U.S. population. That hasn't always been the case. In fact, there were quotas up through the 1960s and 70s that actually limited how many people from Asian countries or Hispanic countries were allowed to come into the United States. But throughout the 60s and 70s, those laws were changed. And since then, we've seen a large influx of Asian immigrants and Hispanic immigrants. And as you learned in unit two of this course, our largest country of origin for immigrants into the United States today is Mexico. The third and final topic for section 4.7 today is ethnic divide and we've seen various examples of ethnic division throughout the world and over time but a couple that we're gonna focus on take place in South Africa and in India. First, in South Africa there used to exist a system called apartheid and apartheid was very similar to the Jim Crow era of the United States and in those southern states that we talked about where racial ethnic division was state-sponsored, meaning it was enforced 
by law, by the government. And of course, as you might know, there was a movement against this, just like there was in the United States. And it was led by a guy named Nelson Mandela, who you may have heard of. He ended up spending many, many years in prison as a result of his efforts, but was eventually released. Apartheid ended in 1991, and Nelson Mandela actually became the president of South Africa. Pretty incredible story there. Now, in India, we have the partition of British India in 1947, meaning it was divided. Okay? At first, it was divided between India and then East and West Pakistan. Eventually, West Pakistan just became Pakistan as we know it today. East Pakistan became Bangladesh. But this division right along the northwestern portion of India has become not just a territorial divide, but a conflict and very much a religious divide. So in 1947, once these two separate states are created, many Muslims who were in India migrated to Pakistan. Millions of people. And then millions of Hindus who were in what is now Pakistan migrated to India. So there was this massive migration of people across the border going either way. And today, India is mostly Hindu and Pakistan is mostly Muslim. But there's a region at the top of this border, and it's really between India, Pakistan, and China, called the Kashmir region, which has been very much in dispute and has caused quite a bit of conflict over the years. And there's also another religious division we need to know about. There's a minority religion in the Punjab region in this same area on the northern edge of the border between these countries. And it is predominantly Sikh. And uh, there's been, because we have uh, uh, three different religious groups in the same area, and then you throw China into the mix, there's been a lot of debate and conflict in that region, not just religiously speaking, but also just in terms of which countries control that territory. And finally, the Kurds. The Kurds are a Muslim ethnic group that are largely concentrated in Turkey, Syria, Iraq, and Iran. And the reason I can't say the Kurds are in Kurdistan is because Kurdistan is not an official country. The Kurds are a stateless nation, and they are a very distinct cultural group, ethnic group, compared to other people in the Middle East, the groups that surround them. And because of that, they have faced a lot of persecution. The Kurds have a lot more values that align with, say, the United States or Western Europe than many other countries in that region of the world and uh, have had to defend those values in conflict, in armed conflict. And we have fought, our soldiers have fought uh, alongside the Kurds for many, many years up until recently. So the Kurds are a very important group to know for the AP exam. I guarantee you there will be a question about the Kurds. Very important ethnic group. Okay, that's it for the uh, key items that I wanted to discuss for section 4.7. Make sure you take a look at all the notes that are linked in the buzz agenda today and then knock out that 4.7 checkpoint to make sure you have a good grip on all of these key items. All right, thanks for tuning in, everyone. I'll see you next time.